me, the initial transition to practicing more and more minimally invasive surgery really started during my fellowship training. And I specifically selected my fellowship mentor because it was going to be basically 100% focused on minimally invasive surgery during that year of training. And that gave me such a fantastic foundation upon which to build uh, some of the skills that I learned during, during my, my residency, including, you know, obviously lumbar fusions, lateral operations, and that kind of thing. And so when I started my practice, I knew that I wanted minimally invasive surgery to be a major, major part of my practice. And what I've told some of our residents and fellows moving forward has been that if you do decide that that really is going to be a significant part of your practice, you really have to dedicate yourself to that, particularly at the beginning where there is a learning curve that's been very, very well described in the literature. And so it's possible that at the beginning of your, your practice, these operations may take longer, they may seem more challenging, but really making a mental effort to dedicate yourself to that craft and, and that part of your practice will end up making them more and more efficient to the point where in many cases, I find a minimally invasive operation um, even more efficient than the, um, the corollary or equivalent open operation. So technically, I think that the process now is very well established. And I think that nowadays what you can do if you want to transition from open to minimally invasive surgery is first to liaise to a mentor. A mentor is fundamental. That is going to uh, help you to understand what is your caseload, to understand what is from your own caseload, which cases are more amenable to be treated by minimally invasive surgery is going to help you learn in the lab the skills is going to help you to improve your your weakest points and to go through the recipe book in order to be able to do what other people have obtained with the same techniques the recipe makes a great cook uh, contrary to what you can think a great cook is not anyone who is inventing every day how to do his recipes. He's someone who has been working hard in learning which is the perfect recipe, and then he's repeating it every day. That's the, the, the best cooking. And I think that it's the best surgery when you have are involved in a collaborative effort of many surgeons of a big, big community to understand which are the best ways to perform the surgery, and then having a, a, a very good adherence to that uh, recipe that emerges from, from the experience of others and from your, your own experience. In my opinion, the third important aspect of incorporating minimal invasive surgery is to selecting your pathway. And your pathway is something that is going to depend on mainly on two things. First, on your personal uh, uh, predisposition and your personal abilities to incorporate some of the parts of the minimally invasive experience. And the sec second thing is understanding your case law. So by doing that, you can design a stepwise approach where you put first what cases are common and easy to treat and have a, a, a granted good result. And this is the type of case that you should be doing first. For example, if you have frequent cases with degenerative spine, I think that you will want to learn in your first uh, 10 exit cases, for example, to do L2, 3, L3, 4, modic 1 changes, or, uh, because it's a very safe bet. And probably the second step, which is very frequent, is going to keep you trained and is a little bit more demanding, can be low grade L4, 5. Uh, spondylar diseases with stenosis and then next step could be a junctional disease revision that can be for someone some people who have uh, who have uh, uh, a different case load can be before the spondylar diseases and so on com increasing the complexity and trying to uh, to use as a fundamental of your practice those areas where you have a higher case load this would be my advice to incorporate minimal invasive surgery into your practice. Safety, 
graduality, good result selec uh, selection of, of cases with uh, expected good results. So I think it's really important for surgeons to be able to gain the confidence to adopt the techniques in their practice. Uh, and I, again, I think that's where utilizing uh, the CPD through Nuvasive, the, um, the, the really hands-on learning that is provided with the courses, as well as just having access to amazing technology sources uh, to, to assist the surgeons with the, with the procedures, I think is really important in making that transition. Um, you know, I think that once surgeons are able to, to really see how it works and, and how patients ultimately do, that's really the key to continuing to adopt these technologies throughout, throughout their career. And you really do have to be able to stay on top of, uh, you know, the continued learning that it takes to, uh, to really be able to incorporate the different things that may come up over time and really be able to be flexible in what different patients might need. Um, I've seen in my practice that uh, with the way my patients are recovering faster and recovering stronger, I think that's a really important aspect of, of less invasive surgery for me. Uh, you know, they really are able to minimize opioid use, uh, get back to work quicker, mobilize easier, and really the length of stay in the hospital has been much shorter. So overall, there's, a, there's really a whole uh, number of reasons why it's advantageous to, to traditional open surgery. And I think it's really important for us to be able to offer that to our patients. As far as how to make the shift, I think everybody is already making the shift to less invasive surgery because everybody wants to provide improvement to their patient and their own skills they want to improve. And how do you do that? Well, the biggest thing is you learn from others. It's really that simple. There's a great body of literature. We have meetings all the time. Um, we've got great uh, professional tools provided by Nuvasive. And you can see the procedures that other people have adopted and changed their practice in making it less invasive. Um, one of the main procedures for me is really utilizing a midline approach. And it's a very common approach that we all know, posterior midline approach to the lumbar spine. If you can do what you need to do in the midline corridor without going past the lateral border of the facet margins, that already is less invasive too. So whether you do a micro disc and you make a small mini open incision, whether you do a tubular discectomy, whether you do a one inch incision and use a Taylor retractor and still do a micro disc, that patient could go home the same day. I think that the relative difference from all those procedures is, is probably pretty small. I think for me, the biggest leap was, is changing my fusions from a posterior lateral base fusions over to a fusion that was based either on the posterior lamina, okay, so a posterior lamina fusion without a posterior lateral fusion, or a posterior lamina fusion with a posterior inner body fusion. And I think if you do that without going past the lateral border where you denervate the multifidus and the longissimus, then simply you are a less invasive surgeon if you've moved from posterior lateral fusion to a midline fusion. So this is really a transition from open surgery to less invasive procedures that happened for me during my practice. The number one source of knowledge uh, for me in that transition was really my partners, uh, other surgeons, across the country, but in particular, people that worked right in my own community. I was in practice in Charlotte, North Carolina for about seven years, and I had half a dozen partners that were wonderful, and some of them were involved in developing some of these techniques, and some of them were more recently trained. They were younger than I, and this was a, a situation where we could operate together, and while I'm acting like I'm teaching them, they're actually teaching me. Uh, and over the years, when another idea or concept came along, I would often seek out training uh, of a new technique, for example, uh, minimally invasive or less invasive T-lift 
was something that I went to industry and a company like Nuvasiv uh, provides hands-on training and mentoring. They'll put you in the room with a, an experienced surgeon who will talk you through it. They'll show you presentations, get your mind uh, around all of the concepts of the technique, and then you'll have a cadaver and you can practice it. And that is a huge step up in your confidence and knowledge. And often what you'll find is all of these techniques really employ skills that you already have by doing open surgery. It's just a matter of figuring out how do I need to make little modifications and what are the little tips and tricks? Uh, it might be silly things like I, for example, I use a ruler to mark where I'm gonna make the incision to put my perk screws in, take an x-ray and mark the midline and the pedicles, and then I go a centimeter lateral to that. I literally measure that. It's four centimeters from the midline for your average size patient. So if you make the incision in the wrong place, you struggle more and it kind of turns you off to doing procedures like this. But if you figure that out and somebody just tells you that, like I just told everybody that, it can change your life and make it very easy. Uh, so the key is get trained. Uh, seek out training from companies like Nuvasiv. And if you ha are lucky enough to have colleagues in your community that are willing to help kind of hold your hand and get you through those first couple of cases, it's actually, you know, often a learning curve of three cases and then you're, you're good to go. And you could pretty much teach the technique. I have found that to be true universally. That's how I learned how to do less invasive T-lift. That's how I learned to do lateral A-lift. I went to a course at Nuvasiv. I had some mentoring and teaching. They made available to me experienced surgeons that I could ask my questions of. I got good answers. I got good advice. I did it and now I teach it.